We have the 5.0 all disassembled here, laid out on this little piece of plastic that I cleaned off. I have some thoughts about the various parts in this motor that I would like to cover, just because I like to compare certain engines to, up to other engines. And a good one to use as a base because of the crowd on my channel is the LS-based series engine. So I will be comparing this Ford engine, the Ford Performance engine, to the LS-based GM Performance engine and give you my thoughts on what's different, what's better, what's worse, if much at all. So you can see how I have this laid out. Now the engine is sitting in the same orientation up there currently, but it really doesn't matter because I do mark things. So there's a few things that do kind of matter, like these bearings. I am going to keep them in the same orientation until I get the new rotating assembly and see what's different. This crank may have the same specs as the new one, I highly doubt it, but it's possible. So. I have the bearings in the same orientation. Now, this is the part that was on the block. Uh, that's why there's only a few bearings here. The other bearings are all still in here, and there's only one thrust plate. Now, one thing of note, these Ford engines, this is identical to the EcoBoost I had apart, where it had these little half thrust plate pieces. And the block only has one half of it where it's got a thrust plate. The main bearing section, or this, this section of it, it actually has one on each side here. So there's two on that section. Now that's obviously the part that gives the controls the end plate, but this part is towards the back of the motor, so towards the, the seal side. And that's because if it's a, like a manual car, it will be pushing against this and that one. And then the other direction never really sees any stress. So they save money by only doing half on one side. That way the it's just not a necessary secondary piece. Just like the EcoBoost engine that I pulled apart, they have coated bearings on all the main caps. And then the front part of the block has a coated bearing. The rest of them are just standard bearings. The connecting rod side of things, they have a coated bearing on the thrust side where all the power gets transferred to and an uncoated bearing on the other side couple things I'm noticing. So if I compare this to the LS-based engines, the connecting rods, there's really not a whole lot of difference. These powdered and cracked rod designs, the LS is using the same thing. Now, some LS-based engines have a little bit crummier looking casting. They, they don't, like this almost looks like they sanded it and then blasted it, I'm not sure. It looks like a little bit better casting, I guess, but not by a whole lot. I mean, it's really kind of a horse apiece there. The wrist pin doesn't look much different. There's a little bit of a taper here. I don't remember or recall if that's on the LS-based ones or not. I've only had a couple of stock LSs apart that far as far as actual LS engines. Now, the GM trucks, however, I've had quite a few of those apart, and those are a little bit different animal. They're more of a rough casting. They're not as nice. So I'm going to go grab a piston quick. On second thought, I don't have a piston, I'll just have to talk about it. So this is long after I have the car assembled, but I happened to find a factory LS2 piston in my garage. I finally found the one I was actually looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some different views of this piston while the video is going as I'm explaining the differences between the systems or, or the different engines. So when comparing the pistons on this motor versus, for instance, an LS-based engine, I'm just using that for reference because it's something that most of my channel is very familiar with. This piston here is a domed piston. So it has a dome on it, and then it has the valve reliefs. And of course, an LS is two valves per cylinder. This is four, so it has four valve reliefs. The LS doesn't have that. Now, what is different about this piston aside from the obvious combustion side of it versus like an LS-based piston? There are several differences, actually. A lot more than I expected to find. This has more of a reinforced towards the center of the piston for strength here, and that is very nice. This is actually a really nice quality piston, and I'm very impressed with the piston quality. Now, the one thing that's a huge difference is the thickness. Now, an LS-based engine has a much taller piston. There's a plus and minus to that, and the, you know each one has its own positives and negatives. This one is going to be lighter, easier to go up and down, you can get more RPMs out of it, and it's going to be a little more efficient and better for performance side of things. However, the LS engine with the taller piston has a longer skirt and therefore has more support and is able to maintain 
better stability with more stroke. So this piston is not going to be very good for any decent amount of stroke. Even the stroke this has, it's not going to be very good for stability unless the tolerances are extremely tight. And I'm sure they are because when I was pulling this thing out, when I got to just the skirt being in the piston, it, it took me a little bit to get it out without wrecking anything. It was really tight tolerance. And that is something that the LS Space engines do not have. They're pretty sloppy and crudely built when it comes to the piston side of things. So Ford did very good on the pistons. I just wish the skirt was a little bit taller just because I feel like it's a better design for longevity sake. Performance wise, I'd rather have this. Longevity wise, I'd rather have the other style. So pick your poison, I guess. Now, crankshaft. This thing reminds me so much of the EcoBoost crankshaft. Everything about it is almost identical. And I say that in the respect of a negative way because that EcoBoost broke the crankshaft. And my concern with this one is there is no chamfer here. Normally, a strong crank would have a slight chamfer that would be popping outward that would allow this thing to have more strength between where it connects from here to here. And then there's a lot of material removed out here, which isn't as big of a deal, but it'd be nice if they did. Okay, so you can see how it's kind of sunken in like that. It'd be nice if they did more gradual. Yes, it would add a little more weight, but it would increase a lot of strength. Now, my issue with that is in reference to how the EcoBoost motor failed. It broke in this area, and I can see there's not much material here, and obviously all these cylinders forward of this are driving through this piece. Now, the biggest issue with this crankshaft is by far this area where the chamfer is, and that's because this is actually sunken in. So it's actually like they took a cutter and cut a groove deeper in this area than what the actual bearing is. So that makes this a very, very weak area on both ends and very prone to failure. Piss poor design. I do not like it. I think Ford needs to change this in order to make a better engine. If they change that, the performance gurus would be able to crank these things up considerably. I am worried this is going to become a problem in the future. It may or may not. I might be totally wrong, but that does not look like a very strong crank to me. Now, the oil pump. Same basic design as any LS engine is. Uh, there's a couple small differences. I mean, this is pretty much the standard for oil pumps now. They have a little gear thing in here, and we'll get that apart later for, for when I do the upgrade of that oil pump because we are upgrading it. But it's got a case half here. This piece separates from this piece, and that's how you change out the guts in the pump. This is a little bit different than most pumps. This thing is huge, and you saw the plastic thing for the oil pan in my videos here for this Ford, but that plastic sump thing is really weak, and this is a really huge hole, which allows a lot of volume in. I don't know if it's going to help or not. Because the volume out is this small port here. And, it, you know, you're not sitting at 1,000 PSI or anything. You really, you know, having a little more volume here might be helpful. Especially with a motor that has so much valve train and stuff going on. And such a huge hole going in. I'm going to look into this versus the block and see if I can upgrade anything for the guy while I'm already here and already have the motor apart to try and increase volume just in case he were to need it. I mean, he won't, I don't think, because people are getting by without doing that, I'm sure. But I might actually increase volume a little bit there. So we're on to the block now. Now, what do I want to compare here? Let's, uh, let's go over quite a few little details. For one, the oil squirters. I'm not sure what this little center hole is. I'd like to maybe see if that flows or not. I don't think it should. It, that'd be silly for Ford to make that flow out when it's supposed to be squirting at the bottom of the pistons. Uh, the main girdle area. That is an area I'd really like to look a little closer at because, for instance, like I say, comparing to the LS-based engines, the LS engines, instead of having this little hole like this one has here, if you get the actual LS engines, there's a big window here, a big opening. And so you have this main section connected just right here, and then you have a camshaft above here, so you have this whole main area here only connected by a little sliver right here and a little sliver right here and then this is just a super thin area with a big bearing for the camshaft in it. So this whole area is very, very weak on the LSs. This one is not at all like that, not even close. It's got a hole drill here and then it's connected the rest of the way across and then there's a hole drill here on the other side that you can't see because obviously it's the reverse of this, but this is cut out for the piston bore here. And that makes this thing just a ton stronger 
than the LS, at least in the main area. So this is going to be much more rigid and less likely to twist and move. I would compare this in strength to the iron LS engine, but being aluminum. So you have the advantage of the aluminum lack of weight, but the strength of the iron as far as that side of things go. Now, machining quality. I'm looking at this thing and I see they did deburr a lot of the edges here, but they didn't deburr the edges here, which is kind of, eh, eh, you know, it could, could be better. They could have at least did a little more deburring here. It's really not that bad, though. I do like the mains here where, where this is at. It looks like they did a very good hone job for a line hone. The LSs are, man, they, they're kind of hit or miss. Some of them are really nice, some of them aren't. Now, this, of course, is the first 5.0 I've had a part of this era, and so... This might change depending. That machining looks very, very good. The main cap, where the main cap gets cut, there's a big cutter that comes across here. That area actually looks very well machined. It looks very nice, very good quality. This whole bottom section looks very, very nice as far as the block itself goes. So let's go ahead and flip this over. You can see these are where the, the main caps get bolted down. Now these are pretty good sized bolt. The LSs have a smaller bolt diameter going down in here. I think it's an eight by one, two, five, I believe on the LS. Then we get up to here. And I'm not sure how it, well you can see it. I'll move this back and forth for reflection sake. But right here on the deck surface is a really poor machining job here. I can actually feel these little ripples that are in here. And then on top of it, this surface, the, the cutter that comes by does a coarse cut. Now the LS based engines, their main deck surface cut is a pretty rough finish, but at least it's consistent. This one has very patchy consistency. So I can see a little bit of the weird counter. So they must cut it one direction and then come back and cut it in another direction. But I can see the, the, the two directions that are cut in different areas. So it's very crude cut. I'm going to have this thing just hit once just to clean it up a little bit. It'll probably take two thousands off. Won't be a whole lot. I don't think it'll take much to clean this off, but at least if it's perfectly flat, it'll seal the head gasket better. Uh, obviously, this wouldn't have a problem from factory because that's the way they do it. They don't have any issues. But I'm looking at it, and I see both sides have the same kind of thing, just in different areas. Like this one has the patchiness over here, over here, whereas the other one was more centrally located on this side. It's like here, here, and then up here. It's just shifted a little bit. But either way, they both have the same patchiness going on, which is a little odd. Now... Up here on the top half of the motor, the LS base engines do have a lot of strength on the top half because this deck surface comes up much higher because of where the lifters go in. And because it comes up higher, it's got some bracing in there that adds a little strength up here. And when you bolt it to the head and the head and block are sandwiched together, the head adds a lot of strength to the block. So the top half of the LS base blocks will be fairly strong. Unfortunately, the bottom half is a little bit weak because of that that windowing like I was talking about earlier. This one, however, is not quite as strong on top. Now, if a guy could take and somehow move the knock sensor somewhere, I guess you could probably bolt some kind of bracket in here, like a strengthening girdle of some sort, but I don't think it's necessary because most of the, the strength is needed on the bottom, not on the top. So Ford did it better in that respect. And the casting quality. It actually looks like a pretty decent casting of aluminum. I'm not sure the makeup of this aluminum or how soft it is yet, but that will be found out when this gets cut. Now, the LS-based engines, when when you cut the decks on the aluminum versions of them, they which is the true LS, not the LS-based, uh, like the, the LQ9, for instance, which is a truck engine block. But anyway, it, the, the aluminum versions of the LS engines their aluminum is very soggy, kind of. It's not very... So when you run a cutter across it, it kind of... It tings as it goes across a good quality aluminum, but the LS is it more smooshes. It just, it just goes smooth. It cuts it like butter. Like, there's not much resistance there. And hopefully, this one is made out of a better material that makes the more ting sound as you're cutting it, the more solid hardness kind of a sound to it. Now, what about the sleeves here? So... I believe this has iron sleeves. Yep, it definitely has an iron sleeve. But to be honest, that, that magnet, man, I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's sticking very hard. So let's go ahead 
yeah, there, it's a very, very thin sleeve. I can barely even stick it on the edge here. So there's a very thin sleeve of iron. I don't know if you'd even be able to open up this bore without getting contact to the aluminum. This might be a situation where you can't really bore these motors out unless you sleeve them. I'm not sure. It does not seem like there's, yeah, there is almost no material in there. I can see the inside wall here. Wow, those are some super thin sleeves. I don't think I've ever seen them that thin before. I'm sure somebody else has, but I personally haven't. That's kind of an interesting thing. I'm not sure whether I like that or not. It reduces strength. I'd probably rather have a thicker iron sleeve in there, but who's to say you can't put a darton sleeve in this thing and make it really strong? Now, I see a couple of ports here. That's a little strange. I wonder what those are for. Degassing for the coolant, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah, there's another little port on the other side here. So there's one going here, one going in here. That must be some kind of degassing port or something. I'm curious how deep those go. Okay, I can see coolant down in there. Let's see what happens when I push a little air in it. Oh yeah, came right out. So that's a degassing transfer port of some sort. That's that's very, very weird. So even if you were to try and bore this out, you would hit that port, that's for sure. Because there's, there's not going to be much wall inside here, but this does actually go all the way through. Very, very strange. I wonder why Ford did that, of all things. Why they did that. That makes me wonder a little bit. Aside from that, I mean, it's pretty much to, just an engine block. I mean, it's just kind of unique ways of doing different things. And obviously there's going to be different to the overhead cam motor so that the oil drains different, things like that. But other than that, it's pretty much just another motor. So I did a little bit more research on the process of the cylinder walls on this particular engine because it had me intrigued as well. So this plasma spray welding technique that they do, it's very cool. I found a video, a Cosworth engine video, and this video, it shows a machine, you know, it, it rotates a, a big table and an engine block appears, it's a Cosworth engine block, and there's this machine with this rotating head, and this head has a plasma wire spray welder that's a rotating device. So it's spinning, and it's actually already doing its plasma arc thing, uh, just while it's spinning. So this thing starts spinning up, and it comes up, and it goes into the bore of the cylinder, and it goes up and down a couple of times, and what it's doing is it's spraying molten metal in a plasma format of some form i don't know i guess i don't fully understand it but basically it's spraying the metal onto the cylinder walls before they go ahead and do the finish on the cylinder wall so kind of a cool process um all in all what are my opinions of the two different engines as far as a conclusion goes i guess ls engine is where i'm gonna stay as far as anything that i build for my own personal self if i were to do something i would choose the ls most likely, and the only reason I would do that is because of the upgradability, affordability per the power output. So I can get much more power with a lot less investment for my money. So the better bang for the buck. And it's a much smaller overall engine. When it's all assembled, the cylinder heads are on, the intake's on, the oil pan, everything's on. It's a much smaller engine and I can fit much more cubic inches in it so it can be a lot stronger, more powerful engine in the end. Now, there is a caveat to that. If I decided to build some kind of cool rat rod with a modern drivetrain, a lot of people are doing like Corvette driveline swaps into old vehicles. They'll take like a old 50s Ford or something, and they'll throw an LS platform out of a Corvette into it, I would actually opt for, as long as I wasn't looking for big power output, I would opt for the Coyote drivetrain, just because it looks so much more technologically advanced, because, I mean, it is more technologically advanced in reality, uh, but the cool factor of having a dual overhead cam motor and something that old, and then I would probably swing towards the Coyote motor. Um, but if I'm looking for straight up raw massive power, I'm going to go with the LS system just because of how much more versatility I have with that system for the budget that I would be willing to invest in it. Even if I had the money, I still would probably go with the LS just because I feel like I'm getting more out of it for the money. Maybe I'm cheap. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know. What would you run? What would you prefer? 
I'm sure most of you on my channel that are subscribed are going to be choosing the LS platform. However, I could be wrong because a lot of you know about the LS platform's major problem, which is that AFM system. And if you don't know or understand it, you might choose to go with the 4. I don't know. Let me know down below. And uh, with that, like, share, subscribe. And as always, I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for joining me.